just affect their muscles and their posture. This affects their heart. You know, when you can't breathe through your nose, you can't. You know, you're breathing dirty, unfiltered air. Uh, you're only getting 80% oxygenation at times. You know, you're having real issues to your whole immune system. You're more acidic. You're more prone to chronic infections and things like that. Your heart's taking a beating, especially if you're apneic. It has tremendous damage to your heart. So this has a lot, I think, of really undiscovered influences. And I just feel, I feel stupid that I didn't see this 15 years ago, but I feel blessed to have found it at this point in my career. People ask me when I'm going to retire, and I tell them when they drag me out in a body bag. <laughs> and I'm having too much fun. But here are some resources if you want to look some more at this. Um, Dr. Zaghi is at the Breathe Institute. That's in uh, L.A. on Wilshire Boulevard. Uh, myofunctional therapy, There's these are two different organizations uh, that myofunctional. So if you're looking to work with somebody, you see a patient, you say, well, let's try this, see if this will help some of your issues. Uh, and then if you're from this area, these are two really, really good myofunctional therapists. Uh, Monkey Mouse is mainly pediatrics, but they've done a couple of my adult patients that have done phenomenally well. Uh, they have three in the Fort Worth area. And then uh, Colleen Watson is another super myofunctional therapy. She's by herself. And what she does, she'll meet, have the patients come to her office or she'll meet my patients at my office, do an initial exam, and then she'll FaceTime them to follow up with them if they live some distance. So I've got several patients from out of state that are initially met with her and then they're following her on FaceTime to uh, see how well she does. So you see here how the tongue affects the breathing but it also affects the way your teeth come in, which ultimately affects your bite, the way your teeth come together. And so I think I'm almost right on the button. So Dr. Cowden and I are gonna to talk to you a little bit about how your teeth come together. Now there's an interesting thing about this, and the fact that I believe that this also has an effect on your autoimmune system. I had a patient from, New, uh, from uh, Oklahoma referred to me, for chronic tensor tympani syndrome. And this is an incurable syndrome, they say. And this little boy was, was going a little bit, he was 14 when I made, but when he's 10 years old, he had, well, his history had chronic sinus infections, tonsillitis, uh, five or six sets of tubes put in his ear when he was a kid. And when he's, he had a uh, sinus doctor, an allergist told him to use a squeezing bulb at night when he's taking a shower in the morning, he squeezed it so hard, it just set something off in his left ear. The pain was excruciating, he cried for hours, couldn't get it calmed down. And it would finally calm down, even his mother just setting a coffee cup on the kitchen counter would drive the, cause the pain crazy. Uh, he had to drop out of school, because kids made fun of him because he wore <laughs> noise canceling headphones to school. Uh, hadn't been out to eat in a restaurant in over four years because of the noise. And he was referred to me by a dentist, a TMJ guy up in Norman, Oklahoma. And so he comes down and we, trying to figure out what's going on. So I go back to my clean heart, no more days, and I start muscle testing him. And he shows that he's got a low-grade uh, strep infection in the tonsillar scar on the left side. So his pain at that point is about a nine or a 10. He was really in bad shape. We injected it with a homeopathic for strep. And uh, his pain went down to a three. So then I showed him Dr. O'Mora's technique of reflexology. He got his pain to go to zero. His parents are crying, heck, I'm crying, the kid's crying, but he's excited because he has some control over his pain for the first time in four years. He said, well, what are we going to do? And I said, well, you haven't been to a restaurant in four years, I go eat dinner. And so <laughs> they leave, they come back the next morning, well, how was dinner? Well, you know, he hadn't slept well in four years. He's, we got back to the hotel about five and he slept all night long. We didn't have the heart to wake him up. He hadn't had dinner. And I said, well, how was your pain? So I was back to a six. But he said, that's better. Most of the time it's a seven or eight when I wake up. And I said, well, what would cause it? To, we had it completely gone. What would cause it? And I said, let's check your bite. And so I used a T-scan, and I'm going to show a demonstration when we break up and go to groups. And so I went in, and I checked his bite. And sure enough, he had a little high spot on a crown or molar on the lower left side. I adjusted that. He's been pain-free ever since. So it's been four years. He's back to school, got his driver's license, getting ready to go to college. And uh, so... That's what your bike can do to you. Questions on this part? Come up here, yes, up here, up here, up here. Um, 
wonder about your thoughts about Boteco breathing. Uh, I think it has some great benefits. You know, Boteco breathing. Yeah, I think it has some great benefits. You know, the thing that I have wondered about is I've taken uh, craniosacral therapy courses and stuff like that. And I've been roffed a number of times. And, and yesterday, after seeing Dr. Berger's presentation, I'm thinking, is there a way that I can avoid the surgery? Is there a way of somehow freeing up the fascia and the muscles? The muscles are so tight. And when you go in there, it's like uh, the girl you saw on that last little video. I just snipped the mucosa, and I was just spreading the mucosa. I hadn't gotten any further than that. And I hadn't even gotten into the submucosal area. And this, she felt the pop, popping in her neck. And so, you know, I don't know. I, mean, I figure you can stretch that fascia. And if that, is it the fascia that's holding it back, holding the muscles and making them taut or what? Because when I opened it up, the genioglossal muscle is still tight. They can stick their tongue out and it starts, I mean, once you start into this stuff, you get part of it done, the tongue does some weird things when you ask them to stick it out. You just head to El Paso over here, going to Phoenix or whatever, you know. You, oh, gosh, okay, I need to work on that side a little more. But uh, so, I'm, so I'm really interested, I mean, especially with the, the DOs or chiropractors or anybody that does manual medicine and works on muscles, I'd be really, really interested if you would stay in touch with me if you do anything and you see results because I, it would be great to avoid having to do the surgery. I mean, it's not a big deal for me because I'm not getting cut off, but the first day or two can be really, really hard on patients. It's, it hurts. Your tongue swells up. A lot of times it'll get numb. I got one patient who's been numb now for about seven months, but it's, it's a spot about a millimeter square on the left side of the midline of the tip of her tongue. So how bad does that bother you? Not that bad. It just, just kind of bugs me. You, know? so, you think you can live the rest of your life okay if it doesn't come back? Yeah, I'm sure I can. So I'll bet it comes back. We just got to give it time. But. I guess back to the Boteco, though. Um, some dentists who are into it say you do the Boteco breathing for three, four, five years um, with the children, then they don't have to get braces. But in terms of expanding the soft palate and everything, could the surgery just be quicker and easier and save well, more time? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because you, you saw the patient, the picture I had showed where the recent patient who was so crowded that I'd made these little inexpensive sleep appliances for. I told him, I said, you know, you, you, he's 53 years old. I said, you really need to think about, it. you know, you're, you've got this crutch and this crutch seems to do okay for you, but you're taking some real, I think your heart's taking a real beating. I said, if you want to really help yourself, I would encourage you to think about getting some palatal expansion. You can do that in an adult with some different appliances. But I wouldn't release your tongue now because you've got this, you've got a garage for a Volkswagen. If I go in here and release your tongue, you're gonna have an SUV trying to get in here and you're gonna, it's gonna make you worse. Plus the fact that they, how many of you are familiar with a Malin Potty score? Okay, a Malin Potty score is with Dr. Malin Potty would have patients open Say, ah, 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 If he can see the back of their throat, that's a malin potty one. If he can just see the uvula, that's a malin potty two. If he can just see the top of the uvula, that's a malin potty three. If all he could see was a soft palate, that's a malin potty four. And a lot of these people snore is uh, accentuated because of the excessive long, soft palate. So you have to be very careful that, and Dr. Zaghi says, I've made some people worse. They're snoring and sleep apnea worse. Their pain is much better, but their apnea is much worse because of the, they have such a long, soft palate. And I don't quite understand if you freed the tongue to come up and forward, how that accentuates that, or is it just you freed the tongue to where it relaxes more and falls back into the, the throat? I'm not sure. So in the, thank you so much. Um, in the osteopathic tradition, we feel that the body is, is dynamic, and so the interplay of structure and function. There, there, in the osteopathic literature, there's um, experience with uh, the practitioner p taking their finger to the root of the tongue and uh, finding areas of tension and, and releasing at the root of the tongue because there are plenty of people that are not 
technically tongue-tied, and yet they have you know this anchor that. Well, uh, you know. let me interrupt you. Um, there's a great art article called Autonomic Nervous System Trial, written by I think it's John Rausch, who's a dentist. And he talks about the fact that the medical dental paradigm of sleep apnea, uh, snoring, is in this small box. And there's a lot of people out there that have different forms of upper airway resistance or just compromised airway to something that's affecting their autonomics. They don't have, like my wife never snored. My wife never stopped breathing. I never heard her ever gasp for air. And yet, and she didn't have a horrific tongue tie, you know, but it was enough to cause an issue. So I agree with you that they're not, because most people think of tongue tie as a speech impediment like Sharon that you saw in the video. Mm -hmm. I think there are really shades of gray in this. And you know, you can, I've had patients that, God, you got a terrible tongue tie. They don't have any symptoms whatsoever. <laughs> I'm not touching them. So wonderful presentation. I have a question. Did you say that when you do this release surgery, the, the muscle is still under tension? No, that's, that's why you're doing it, to try to release that. You're not taking any, you're not no, cutting and you, taking anything out. I thought you said, but after, after the release, you saw the... the well, the, 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 the mucosa... Is yeah. released, yeah. It's released, but the muscle is still tight. So, so the, re, the, the relaxation in the secondary, the relaxation in the secondary areas happens while the muscle is still tight? She can get some, yeah, she got relaxation just from the mucosal uh -huh. frenum. And then the more I worked, the more all this released. Okay. The more, because, well, on uh, the last one I showed, that young girl, mm -hmm. I got her up during the surgery. I was like, wait, stand up, turn your head, turn the other way. Okay, I need to do some more work. Okay. How do you feel? God, I can breathe. Okay, great. Well, let's work on your range of motion. Get these muscles. Yeah, because it's still tight over here a little bit. And so I have her sit back down. I trim a little bit more. Okay. And was it a mandibular advancement uh, uh, appliance that was done first by the doctor you studied with? No, it was. Well, he did. He had one for sleep, but he had a daytime appliance, and yeah. it was a thin vacuum formed you know over a model of the patient's teeth and what he did is he cut this little u-shaped appliance out that fit over their lower teeth and he would add little bits of acrylic on the inside to help stimulate the bottom of your tongue is exquisitely sensitive and he would add little bits of acrylic to help the tongue sit up and forward and he would play with this and play with this and it was one of the hardest things i've ever learned to do Okay. And because it would take hours. And I had a patient who had, this is a big strapping man who had panic attacks and couldn't drive on the freeway. His wife had to bring him to the office. He saw this article in Robert Rowan's second opinion years ago about it. And uh, we made him one of these appliances. He thought it was the greatest thing to slice bread. But he called me a week later and said, Doc, I'm doing great. I'm driving all over. I feel like a free man. I said, but there's an edge on this thing. It's really rough and rubbing my tongue. Well, come on in, let me polish. Like, he came in, I polished it. He couldn't swallow after I polished this. I worked for about four hours that night. I didn't get home until about 11 o'clock. I had to remake the whole thing. So it's very gentle. the last question, and it's a 30 second question and a 30 second answer. Okay. The last patient you showed had kind of a nasal voice. Did that change after your procedure? I don't. I'm not aware of it. I didn't, wasn't aware of that. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, we're, we're moving immediately into the next section. Great job. Thank you. In this, in this next segment, we're going to have a discussion about the relationship between the, the mouth and the rest of the body. You know, the, the tongue tie is a very important part of that. But another very important part of that is something that uh, that each of you could have a huge impact on without learning how to do a, a frenuloplasty. And <clears throat> that is um, this, this phenomenon. When a patient has a malalignment of the head, neck, back, hips, pelvis, knees, ankles, and they go to the dentist to get a dental procedure done, and the dentist adjusts the bite 
after the procedure is done, the bite is going to be adjusted to the malalignment of the head or neck or back or hips or pelvis. And as a result of that, since the bite takes precedence over all other joints in the body, no matter how many times they go to the chiropractor, no matter how many times they go to the osteop osteopathic doctor, they're always going to be going back out of alignment in their body because their bite takes precedence. So if you put their body and, and skull into alignment and then immediately send them to the dentist who knows how to adjust the bite finally, which Dr. Sprinkle is going to show you today, then the body stays in alignment. What an amazing concept, okay? So each of you needs to identify in your community a dentist that could be trained how to properly adjust the bite after you either teach the patient how to adjust their own structure or you help the patient adjust their own structure. So if there's a distance between your office and the dentist's office, then they go from your office to the de other dentist's office with some gauze in between their molars on both sides so that if they if they are driving in a car and they almost have a wreck and they clench their teeth they don't throw their structure out while they're getting to the dentist's office <laughs> okay so so th so this this can be uh, life-changing also for the patients because they stop having chronic pains that are resulting from the malalignment of the hips <laughs> necks back hips pelvis uh, skull etc uh, because you're putting everything into alignment in one day, everything from top to bottom. Okay, so that's the that's the Cliff Notes version. <laughs> so in this room, Dr. Sprinkle is going to teach how he does the bite adjustment. Uh, we have Dr. Strait. Let's see. Well, let me give him in the right order. I don't have it on this page. Dr. Strait is going to teach us how to get the skull into alignment. Right? Okay. Dr. Matt Brock is going to be another room. Raise your hand, Matt. He's going to teach us how to put the hips and the pelvis, and hips and pelvis, anterior and posterior pelvis, into alignment. And then I'm going to show you in another room the other stuff. <laughs>